Hi everyone, it's Chris speaking. Welcome or welcome back. So if you've read the title, today's video is all about being four weeks post-op top surgery. So this is just a quick introduction. Um, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, I wasn't able to do a whole lot of filming or get people to come in and do filming for me going into surgery or coming out of surgery or basically while I was in the hospital. Um, what I do have is a few little clips of the day of when I went in um, and what happened. I think it was the day before, the day that I woke up and I went in. So my surgery uh, was at 8.30 on the 19th of May. So we had to go in at 6.30 and I went and sat in a little room uh, and then they went through some procedures, I took my kid off, I got in that really sexy hospital gown with the back flap open. Um, I could wear underwear though, so that was nice. And then I went into surgery and I basically woke up four or five hours later, very groggy, and slept most of the day. Um, I got told off while I was in the hospital for not drinking any water, but I was in and out of consciousness. So I, they had to put a, an IV drip of fluids in me. And they also put these things on your legs that are like a little compression. So you have compression socks on, um, and then with the compression socks, they put like a, another bigger sock over it. And if you ever had like your blood pressure taken in those machines that go and they put the pressure in your arm, it's sort of like that, but it pulsates. So I had one of those on each leg and I was attached to the bed and it was like massaging my, my legs all night and because I had fluids in I had to pee so much so this poor night nurse had to help me to the toilet like four times so not that I ever think that night nurse will see it but I'm sorry that I had to pee so much but really I mean you put the drip in so um, I will take my shirt off and show you what I look like four weeks post-op I just want to give you a bit of a rundown on what happened in the hospital um, so that was basically it you walk in, you sit in a room, you do some paperwork, they take your height and your weight, and then just to see uh, how much anesthesia you need, and then you go into a smaller room, and then in the smaller room, you go and do an admissions questionnaire, and that takes about 20 minutes, and then they get you to derobe, they put on compression socks for you, uh, and get you in your surgical outfit, and then you go into a smaller waiting room where I waited for about 10-15 minutes and I was just chatting to my my family and I got a lot of really lovely messages from my friends saying good luck so I was responding to all of them and then they call your name and you go into another room and they take all of your belongings so uh, I because of COVID I made sure that I messaged all of my loved ones that I was going in so I probably wasn't going to talk to them for a little while and they wouldn't know when when I was out Go into this other room, you get hooked up, you, you know, your, your string of doctors uh, came and talked to me. So I had the surgeon, I had the anaesthetist, I had the anaesthetist assistant, and I had uh, two nurses come and talk to me all before we went in. And then we went into the operating theatre or, or the surgery room and you get on put on this bed. Now for me, I don't know if anybody else's experience was different, but the bed is like your body width there is not a lot of room for movement so you've got to shift yourself onto this bed and lie flat and sorry about the birds I don't have my mic on like normal just because I'm in my kitchen um, and you've got to lie flat with your arms right by your side and you just sort of think of Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory and that's what you you look like and then they ask you some questions the anaesthetist said to me I'm going to give you some good drugs now but we need to keep talking to you and I don't remember anything after that I was out uh, and then I woke up probably about four and a half hours later. My surgeon was nice enough to call my partner um, to let her know that I'd come out of surgery straight straight after, which was nice given that it was, you know, COVID and, and they couldn't be in the room. Just having that extra step I appreciated so that uh, Rachel knew that I was safe and then flow on effect from there. Uh, she got to tell my mum and then some other friends. Uh, anyway, I remember waking up about four hours after, and I was very, very groggy, but I sent a message to my mum, and I called Rach, and I think that call lasted all of about three minutes, and then I fell back to sleep. I was like, I gotta go, I'm, I'm falling asleep. And that happened three or four times during that afternoon, I'd wake up, I'd 
call, right? Try and call mum and check in and then I fall asleep. Uh, I was lucky enough to have private health, which meant that I did get a private room uh, when I went to the hospital. Also, I, I guess that was the good thing with COVID was the hospitals, or at least the private hospitals, are quite empty at the moment. So I basically got a, a decent room uh, for myself. Um, I know a lot of people have had their surgeries cancelled or postponed, and that sucks. I was very, very lucky. I was looking at getting mine postponed, but you know, right up to that last sort of fortnight leading up to the the surgery, it looked like it may or may not happen. Um, and then I went in for a pre-op appointment because in Brisbane, I assume it's the same elsewhere that you need to do a pre-op appointment before you go into surgery. So it's like a secondary consult where you go and get your, um, your vests fitted. I can show you a vest if you want to have a look at it, uh, which is the for the post-op care. Um, all right. So that happened and just remember that it, it will happen for you. If they've been postponed, yeah, it does suck that it has been postponed, but it will happen. Um, and if you're lucky like me, then, then that's awesome as well. What happens the day after or the day that you get discharged is that you get some nurses come in, or for me, this is all my experience, they came in in the morning, um, they basically checked on me, they gave me some breakfast, I wasn't eating very much uh, or drinking very much. Um, so they basically waited until I had eaten something or tried to eat something and then they said okay we'll get the surgeon and the surgeon came in at about 8.30 the next day so I was in the hospital for about 24 hours all up uh, and then they were just over 24 hours uh, she came in she had a look at it so after surgery you get this massive band-aid basically put on you so I think it's underneath you when you go in to the operating theatre and then you're strapped in um, like, yeah, just like a big, big band-aid holding you in and then you get a nurse and they come in and they take it off for you. That shit is painful because it's all adhesive and if it gets on your skin, it's like free waxing. Um, it doesn't, it hurt in some places where the sensitivity hasn't gone. So for me in my chest now, uh, I don't have a lot of sensation up the top here and I'll show you when I take my shirt off to to show you the results um, but there are parts that still the the skin still remembers what pain feels like so that was interesting and then they help you get dressed I decided at 3am in the morning that I needed to put my pants on uh, so I had already done half of it um, and then I they put you in this this binder so they cover you up they put some uh, shit on your nips to, to make them heal better and then they put you in a hospital garment this is like a binder on crack so if you're like me and you were useless with bra clasps prior it's all these stupid little clasps and sorry for the, the chin action and they go all the way down so you get measured for one of these before you go into surgery because it needs to be as tight as humanly possible to hold everything where it's meant to be now normally that will stay on you 24 hours a day for anywhere between four to eight weeks, depending on your surgeon, depending on your surgery. I got let out at three weeks um, because I had built my chest up so much before going into surgery, I guess, and also my chest was so small prior to going to surgery. Um, you know, she in my follow-up appointment, she said, all right, we're gonna keep it on for another two weeks. And then I went last week for another follow-up and they said that I could take it off, which was cool. All right, so I'm gonna input clips from everywhere else, like I said, I'm not sure where I'm going to put them, but uh, basically there is going to be some clips from the day before, the day of surgery, uh, whilst I'm a little bit groggy and in the hospital bed, none of those angles are flattering, so I'm really, really sorry. Uh, and then I think one when I come home. And then I've got just a little clip at the end of me throwing away my last sports bra, which was a very good moment. Um, anyway, so I'm going to take my shirt off and show you four weeks post-op top surgery. I had the peri areola approach with Dr. Elise Saylor at Valley Plastic Surgery. I've still got some adhesive stuff around my nipples, which will take a little while to come off. Um, the left one, so this one, is healthy and they're happy for me just to start scar treatment therapy on it, uh, which is awesome. So I've been doing that for the last couple of days. This one still needs a little bit of tender love and care. 
don't know if I can get you close. Hello, here's my nip. Ew, yuck. Um, some of the blood vessels haven't quite come back. Woo! We had a bit of an earthquake moment. Some of the blood vessels haven't quite come back in the right one yet. So this one still needs to have antiseptic on it and I still need to cover it each day and then yeah, wear a shirt over that. But I now get to wear a shirt and I can walk around shirtless with a pirate nip because it's like yar. Um, anyway, that that's it. I'm gonna import those clips and hopefully you enjoy the video. I am going to make a, <clears throat> excuse me, I am going to make a post-op care video or some suggestions for post-op or what I found that happened after post-op that I wasn't super prepared for, uh, even though I thought I was pretty prepared and what sort of caught me up. And maybe some tips for, for carers as well. Uh, but until then, I will catch you next time. If there's anything you want to see in that video uh, for post-op care, do let me know in the comments below. If you like this or my nips, give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you want to see more content, then click on my face. All right, bye. Okay, bye. All right, hi everyone. I'm about three weeks post-op and I'm about to do something I've wanted to do for a really long time. And that is take my final sports bra that I used to wear at the gym to the bin where it now belongs. Bye. Goodbye.